So I got a question from a couple of students about some of the at least problems. Some of the at least problems. Those are the tricky ones, the at least problems. So I thought I'd do uh, three more examples. I think we just did one in our videos that we initially posted. So three cards are drawn from a deck of 52 playing cards without replacement. That means I take a deck and I draw a card. I draw another card and I draw another card. And we never replace those cards back in the deck. We leave them out. So determine the probability of getting at least one jack. At least, so any time you hear this, at least one, that's going to be a tricky question. So first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on the non-jacks. First, I'm going to find the probability of getting three non-jacks. So it would be a, a non-jack. And a non-jack. And a non-jack. So this is kind of my first step to doing a problem like this. So we want, we're interested in getting at least one jack. I'm going to focus on three cards, and they're all non-jacks, so the opposites of jacks. So by the multiplication rule, it's going to be the probability of getting a, a non-jack times the probability of getting a non-jack given I got a non-jack on the first go-around. And then this is going to be multiplied by the probability that I get a non-jack. Now what color should I use? Given I got a non-jack on the second go-around and on the first go-around. Write it that way. Okay, so think about non jacks. How many jacks are there? Well, there are a total of four jacks, right? Four jacks. So the non jacks, you take what? 52 minus 4. 52 minus 4 to get the non jacks. So that's going to be 52 minus 4 is 48. So we're going to have 48 cards that are not jacks out of a total of 52. Okay, then we're going to multiply by the probability of getting a non-jack, given that we got a non-jack on the first draw. So if we got a non-jack on the first draw, how many jacks, I'm sorry, how many non-jacks do we have remaining? We only have 47, right? It goes down by one. There are 47 non-jacks remaining because we're assuming here that we got a non-jack on the first draw. So that's 47 non-jacks out of a total of only 51 cards. Because right, we're leaving that first non-jack out of the deck. Okay, then we're going to go down. We're going to ask the question, how many non-jacks do we have after we get a non-jack on the first draw and a non-jack on the second draw? How many non-jacks are remaining? Will there be 46? 46. 46 non-jacks out of a total of only 50 cards. 50 cards remaining. We took a card out on the first, we took a card out on the second. So if I wanted to find this probability here, I'd multiply those numbers. 48 times 47 times 46 on top. 48 times 47 times 46. And I'm going to get about... 103,776 divided by 52 times 51 times 50, which is going to be 132,600. And we're going to divide these numbers, 103,776 divided by 132,600. And um, we're going to get about 0.783. Okay, so this should be an equal sign. So all this finds for us is the probability of getting three non-jacks, right? The probability of getting three non-jacks. So we're interested in the probability of getting at least one jack. Probability of at least one jack. 
So if I'm getting at least one jack, that means I'm not getting three non-jacks, right? If I get at least one jack, that means I'm not getting three non-jacks. So this is the same as the probability of not three non-jacks. In other words, we're talking about the probability of the complement of three non-jacks. In other words, remember your complement formula, it's one minus the probability of getting three non-jacks. Now, what's the probability of three non-jacks? We calculated that earlier in blue here, right? In blue, and we put our answer in yellow right there. That's point seven eight three. the probability of getting three non-jacks. So I'm going to take 1 minus 0.783. It's with the probability of 3 non jacks And we subtract those numbers. 1 minus 0.783. And we get 0.217. OK, let's do another example. Number two, let's find out the probability of getting at least one number card. This is on three draws without replacement. So the way I'm going to start this, I'm going to focus on, so we're interested in at least one number card. We're going to focus on all non-number cards, first of all, all non-number cards. So find the probability of a non-number and a non-number and a non-number. So that would be three non-number cards. So that's going to be, first of all, the probability of a non-number using the multiplication rule times the probability of a non-number if I can spell non-number there are two n's in that right no oh, crap it's not working there it goes given that we got a non-number on the first go around times the probability of getting a non-number Given we got a non-number on the first go and a non-number on the second go. Now let's calculate this. What's the probability of getting a non-number? A non-number. First of all, how many number cards are there? How many number cards are there? There are 36, right? You have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a total of nine. And then four different suits. So you got thirty-six. Thirty-six non numbers. Out of fifty-two total cards. So now we're looking for the probability of a non-number in green, given that we got a non-number on the first go-around. So let's assume that we got a non-number on the first go-around. That means there are only 35 non-numbers left. 35 non-numbers left out of a total of how many cards? Well, 51 are left because we took that first card. We're assuming we got a a non-number, and we took it out of the deck. Okay, so now we need to find the probability of a non-number 
given we got a non-number on the first draw and a non-number on the second draw. So here we're multiplying. How many non-numbers are le left in the deck if we got a non-number on the first draw and a non-number on the second draw? There are going to be only 34 remaining, right? 34 out of a total of 50. 50 total cards. So if we multiply those three numbers together, 36 times 35 times 34, 42,840. And the bottoms, what were the bottoms? Uh, I forgot the bottom, it's 132,600. So when you multiply those three numbers on the bottom together. Let's divide this out. This is actually equal to, I don't know why I keep putting that approximately. So 42,840 divided by 132,600. It's about 0.323. Let me put that in blue, blue 0.323. So that's the probability of getting three non-number cards, right? Three non-number cards. Now we're interested in the probability of getting at least one number card. So think about what that means. If I'm getting at least one number card, that means I'm not getting three non-numbers. I'm not getting three non-numbers. So not... Three non numbers. Right, if I'm not getting three non numbers, that means at least one of them has to be a number. So, not three non numbers is the complement of three non numbers. So, the probability of the complement that's what that bar means, it's the complement. Non numbers. It's what's outside of three non numbers. It means not, right? That bar means not, basically. And remember the formula for the complement of an event is one minus the probability of that event. So we're going to have one minus the probability of three non numbers. And we just calculated the probability of three non-numbers. We're here in blue, right? This guy right here. It's 0.323, so we're going to have 1 minus this guy right here is 0.323. And you just subtract those. 1 minus 0.323, approximately. And you get... Not writing it, just quit writing. There it goes. 0.677. Okay, so I'll do a third example here. Just so we have a more practice on this. These are tricky. What do I want? I want the probability of at least one spade. Probability of. Find the probability of getting. At least one spade. So before I try to figure out the probability of at least one spade, I'm going to focus on the probability of getting three non-spades. So three non-spades. So we're going to look at the probability of a non-spade and a non-spade and a non-spade. So this is the probability of three non-spades. And our multiplication rule formula tells us it's the probability of a non-spade times the probability of a nine-spade given, given that we got a, a non-spade on the first go, and then times the probability of a non-spade that oh, should be green right there let's make that green okay times the probability 
of a non-spade given that we got a non-spade on the first go. Let me get my colors right. And a non-spade on the second go. All right, so starting with the first probability, the probability of a non-spade. Well, how many non-spades are there? Non-spades are there. Well, there are 13 spades and 52 cards. So if we were to take 52 minus 13, that would tell you how many non-spades you have. You have a total of 39 cards that are non-spades. It's going to be 39 out of 52. That's on the first draw. So now we're going to multiply. So now we're on the second draw. So we're going to assume we're given here that we got a non-spade on the first draw. So what's the probability of getting another non-spade given that we got a non-spade on the first draw? So that means there are only 38 non-spades left out of 51 cards. Okay, and now we're on the third draw in red. What's the probability of getting a non-spade in red? Given that you got a non-spade on the first draw and a non-spade on the second draw. Well, if you assume that you got a non-spade on the first draw and a non-spade on the second draw, that means there are only 37, 37 non-spades remaining out of a total of only 50 cards. Remember, we're leaving these cards out of the deck as we take them out. So if we were to multiply these numbers together on top, we're going to have 39 times 38 times 37 is 54, 8, 34. And on bottom, 52 times 51 times 50, we multiplied that before, 132,600. I have a bad memory, 132,600. And if we divide this out, 54, 8, 34, divided by 132,600, that's going to be point, approximately point, Four, one, four. So that's the probability of getting three non-spades. So now I'm interested in the probability of getting at least one spade. So let's focus on the probability of getting at least one spade. So what does it mean if I get at least one spade? That means I don't get three non-spades. I don't get three non-spades. So the probability of at least getting one spade is the same as the probability of not three non-spades. So if I don't get three non-spades, I do get at least one spade. Yeah. So not getting three non-spades is also called the complement, this bar here, of three non-spades. That's what that bar means. This bar means here not. So I'm not getting three non-spades. So we know the formula for the probability for a complement of an event is one minus the probability of that event, which in this case would be three non-spades. So 1 minus, well, we just calculated, right, the probability of 3 non-spades, right? Non-spade, 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 that's 3 non-spades. It's 0.414. Yeah, we calculated that earlier. So you just subtract uh, 1 minus 0.414, and you're going to get 0.586. There it goes. Yeah. You know, there's three examples of the at least one. So at least one jack, at least one number card, at least one spade. Yeah, and I think on the homework you have a few of those. All right. So if you have any questions about anything, always remember you can 
meet with me on Microsoft Teams. Set up a meeting. I'm doing office hours, virtual office hours.